Johnny Mack is in the house. Eagles, Panthers, let's get into this one. Big game. Three and three, Philly. Three and two, Carolina. Similar to where they were last year, just one week later. The Eagles were four and one going into the game. Carolina was four and one. The Eagles won. They got to five and one. Carolina went to four and two. The Eagles went on and became the number one seed. This game, similar field, John, as we're trying to find which team is uh, going to go. I don't know. Click on the heels, maybe, of the Saints and the Rams. We don't know that this team. The Eagles will be able to catch the Saints or the Rams, but this is a big game if they want to be in the conversation. Yeah, and that's what I kind of said on on the show last night, Moser, McMullen, and Krause. To me, it's an expectations game. You have to temper your expectations. Uh, if you lose it, I think it changes from being a, a, a first-round buy team potentially to being uh, – sort of backtracked into the NFC East and that being your path to the postseason. Uh, so, you know, it's hyperbole anytime this year if you talk about things in must-win situations. But uh, from this standpoint, if you want to be with those heavyweights, you got to start stacking these wins together. And you certainly can't lose to another NFC team that's going to be in that conversation with you most likely. So, I think from that standpoint, you're right. Uh, now, uh, the Eagles are going to have no issue as far as being in the NFC East conversation, but let's be honest, I think everybody wants more than that. Yeah, there's no doubt. Every game, I think the the win-loss re- ramifications, repercussions, is can they get back to a Super Bowl? It's For me, anyway, it's not – Oh, can they just win the division? Because I saw, I heard you mention last night, and you weren't saying this in like, well, you can always win the division. I don't think people are looking at it like that. It's can we get back to a Super Bowl and win one, or it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, that's kind of the feeling. Yeah, well, I, I yes, I think you're right, and and I think there's different paths to get there. Obviously, it's easier if you have a first round bye. I, I've said a lot. It's it's still very early, but. I think you can forget about the L.A. Rams. Injury aside. Uh, Injury aside, we we always put that caveat on it, but because the NFC West as a whole is so weak, uh, they're going to have a lot of of wins from that standpoint. So it's going to be difficult to catch them. And and then you look at the Saints, and I think there's a potential – if you go on a run to catch them, and it it would be obviously very important to get a bye – and at least one home game. And then if you want to project way down the line and talk about a potential NFC championship game, while the Rams are a very talented team, a very difficult team, they don't have a home field advantage like the Eagles do or or like a lot of teams do in this league. It's just not that nasty of an environment. So uh, you can go at it from that path. And obviously if you, you scale back to the NFC East, then things become much, much more difficult. Not that you can't accomplish it. People have done it in the past, but it's much more difficult. Yeah, but what they do have at home is the ability to play in nicer weather, and that gives their offense a lot more. We saw them struggle offensively in Denver last week, so it might not be a nasty environment, but it does allow them to be optimal, uh, Gabe Kapler, uh, their (laughs) offense to be at optimal level outside. Yeah, no question. I was talking mainly about yep. just environment. The, uh, the environment of the fans, and they're not going to be uh, all, uh, you know, it's so difficult to play here, and we all know the reason why. It's because you step off the bus, and these people are all over you. It's not It's not easy. Uh, I'm looking at their Los schedule Angeles, real fast, John. I'm looking at their schedule, L.A. I find five losable games. That, does that sound like a lot to you? That sounds like a lot. You to want be me? Honest. I'll give them to you. Ready? Their schedule. Let me give them to you. All right, um, Packers. You agree? I always agree because of Aaron right. Rodgers. Exactly. I think the Packers just, stink, but they have Rodgers. Exactly. At the Saints. Yeah, that's a losable game. Chiefs. That is a losable game. At the Bears. No, that team's not ready uh, to compete with a team like the Rams. I, I think there's a lot of hype. Chicago, very good defense, but in this league, you got to be able to score points against a team that can score points. And I've said it from the start. 
the, the Bears are not surviving Mitchell Trubisky. Um, how about Seahawks? No, uh, I'm a little disappointed with the Seahawks. I thought they would be a little bit better than they are. We all knew they were taking a step back, but uh, I thought they still had some pieces together. Earl Thomas injury obviously uh, hurts. Russell Wilson uh, is still a high-level quarterback, but they they never, never address the offensive line. Uh, I No, I can't see the Rams losing uh, a game like that. The Rams are a really good team, really talented team, and they're going to be up in that 13 14 win stratosphere. Well, that's, I, I that's think three, that and then you got Philly. So that's four potential games that, 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 you know, it would be challenging for them. The other game would be at the Lions, and then the rest of it's uh, NFC East garbage. So, I mean, N- NFC West garbage. They, they play the Cardinals and 49ers, and uh, who else is in there? Cardinals, 49ers. Yeah, I mean, uh, we talk about it all the time. NFL teams are, are – every single team has talent. I mean, you look at the Giants, and everybody snickers at them last week now. Uh, but, hey, they have Saquon Barkley. They have Odell Beckham. They have Olivier Vernon. Uh, every team in this league, if you want to look at specific players, specific positions, you can kind of talk yourself into something. But the Rams, to me, look like the one team that's just going to – the worst case scenario, you start talking about 12 wins, probably. All right, John McMullen's with us. Uh, let's dive into Eagles and Panthers a little bit here. And uh, you pulled out the injury today, no sprolls. And uh, other than that, it seems that uh, everybody is a, is a go, right? I mean, oh, Corey Graham was the other guy, but they didn't play with him last week. So relatively healthy for the well, game. Sydney Jones, obviously, Sydney but we Jones. expected, yes. and, and, and uh, all the guys we expected, Nate Gary, DJ Alexander. Let me ask you this. We talked about this earlier. Um, With the trade next week, I heard you last night on Mosher McMullen say you think that they might do something, but it might be more minor. Do they view Sproles coming back that they don't need to get a running back? It's a good question. <laughs> I mean... We're talking week one. We're now going into to week seven, uh, and he's still not playing with a hamstring injury. And Doug said again today, when this week started, he said day to day, and it was uh, whittled down from week to week. And you start thinking, well, maybe he'll be back on the practice field. Maybe he's close, and he didn't practice at all. And now he said today they're hoping he can practice next week. But then again, it's it's – it's Jacksonville, it's London, and then the bye week is after. So I, I'm starting to think maybe that's their plan, to get him through the bye week, give him an extra week, and hope he's ready for that second half of the season. But these plus 30-something guys, Corey Graham is another one, Haloti Nada is questionable. You talk about Jason Peters all the time. He'll play, but he's so banged up. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you can count on them, but I, I think the Eagles are. Doug, I talked about it a lot. Doug loves him as a player. Uh, he always defaults to him when he's available. Uh, so unless they do make a deal, Carlos Hyde just got traded uh, to Jacksonville, so he's off the table. Unless they do make a trade for a running back, he's going to have to be a part of this, no question about it. John, a big matchup on Sunday is Cam Newton versus the Eagles linebackers. Now, Cam Newton in his career, he actually has a passer rating of just under 70. That's the worst passer rating against any team. He he seems to struggle against the Philadelphia Eagles. So what do you expect from the Eagles linebackers, particularly this Sunday, to try and keep him in front of him and uh, in front of them and hopefully maybe cause some turnovers? Yeah, I, I, the Eagles have had a lot of success. Uh, against Cam Newton, uh, traditionally uh, has won two games, lost two, but he has he, he personally hasn't played well uh, against the Eagles, and I, I just don't think they have the weapons at this stage to to really test you uh, down the field. A lot like the Eagles, they're having a lot of issues at wide receiver. Uh, they don't have explosive guys, so. 
you have to add that into the equation as well. Where they can hurt you is the fact that Jim Schwartz has been talking about it all week is those quarterback uh, design runs. We all know how good Cam is uh, uh, with those. And then Christian McCaffrey, who is just uh, a phenomenal player, uh, wrote about him today on 973ESPN.com. The Eagles wanted him badly. If they got him, we wouldn't be talking about this running back by committee constantly. He's a guy who can do everything. He's their leading rusher. He's their leading receiver. He's probably their best route runner. He's a running back. Uh, so those are the ways I think the Panthers can hurt you, not necessarily vertically. And right. that probably drives North Turner crazy because that's what he wants to do. Yeah, now on the other side of the ball, I think it's another interesting matchup. Carson Wentz against the Panthers linebackers. Luke Keekley, arguably the best linebacker in the NFL. How much potential trouble could Carson Wentz Thomas miss? Davis is back. And Thomas Davis is back. I mean, how much trouble could they cause now for the Eagles offense? Yeah, their linebackers are good. You could throw Shaq Thompson in there as yeah. well. They, these are – this is probably the best group of linebackers in the NFL. So maybe this isn't the tight end game. This is more of the all Sean Jeffrey, uh, Nelson Aguilar game. Uh, maybe you got to do some things more outside. and That doesn't look like a strength for the Eagles. It's a lot better now that all Sean is back. Uh, but it's it's one of those where we just talked about. When you talk about NFL games, and if you want to look at the negative side, you can talk yourself into things. And you start looking at Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis and Shaq Thompson and saying, whew, that's, that's a tough group. Uh, but you think about that game last year was the Barrett Brooks block, uh, and, and Keekley got a concussion and sort of sent the Eagles on their way. Uh, he's 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 a really good player. He's really tough to deal with. Sure is. Uh, and one thing is, this team they're fourth in the league running the ball, one thirty nine a game. Eagles typically good against the run, but they're a little light at tackle. We know that. Uh, so I'm interested to see last year in the game, eleven carries. I think it was seventy one yards for Newton. They had four carries for eight yards for McCaffrey. That might change this time around. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, no question. And I think I just said Barrett Brooks, but I love it. it's Brandon Brooks, obviously. But uh, <laughs> you did say Barrett Brooks. Um, I'm sure that uh, he would probably be still hurting if he was blocking somebody. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean they've kind of figured it out with McCaffrey now. I, I think it's one of those things where you know rookie players, no matter who they are, uh, you have some hiccups trying to learn this league, and and now. They've kind of got him in all systems go to that offense. As I mentioned, he's their he's their leading rusher. He's their leading receiver uh, from a reception standpoint. Uh, and he's a three down. He never comes off the field, as Doug said. So it, it's rare you see that in today's NFL. Those kind of backs are becoming uh, endangered species. And when, when they're out there, it's difficult – you know, I talk about it all the times with the Eagles. You you can say running back by committee, and and but you tend to show tendencies when you do that because each guy has a specific skill set of what you're putting them on the field for. Uh, whereas a guy like McCaffrey is not going to tip anything because he does everything well. Uh, he's our best offensive player, and I include Cam Newton in that category, and that's a former MVP in this league. So. If the Panthers are going to win this game, it's because they're running the football uh, well, and and that includes both of those guys, McCaffrey and Cam, from the quarterback position. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on Ertz. Uh, the pa- the Panthers are they have great linebackers, but they don't defend the tight end very well. There's a lot of open space on this team, and Ertz has been excellent. You guys were talking about him on Mosher and McMullen Krause show last night about how. He just catches eight to ten balls every game. I mean, he's just – him and Wentz are just in sync, and this could be another game where he doesn't only get eight to ten, but he gets eight to ten for a lot of yards. And, and you know, there's a difference between getting eight to ten for 80 yards and eight to ten for 140. Yeah, and, and part of it is necessity, and we kind of said that. I, I mean, I, I think the Eagles would prefer uh, to mix it up a little bit more to get the guys on the outside more touches – 
And I, I think it would be more impactful if Zach was at five or six for big gashes. Uh, the reality is they've had to play a lot of, of 12 and 13 personnel because of their issues at receiver. And he's out there, so he's getting a lot of volume. I, I talk about volume receivers all the time when, when Jordan Matthews was catching 80 balls here. It doesn't necessarily – uh, mean you're being that effective. Now, Zach's a much better player than that, and he is very effective. But I, I don't know if you want to keep funneling the ball to the tight end 10 times a game. That's an indication you can't get it to the receivers, and you're not as as, as explosive as you want to be. Yeah. you know, And the one thing is, too, the Eagles, <laughs> um, we know they don't have the deep threat. We'll see if they end up trying. I heard you talking about Gibson last night. And uh, the deep threat, you see Torrey Smith, he's on the other side. He hasn't done a whole heck of a lot in terms of uh, numbers, but just having that threat out there. We'll see if the Eagles, I don't know, give someone a shot to do it this week because this is a team that you can get some big plays on. Yeah, I constantly talk about it. It's not even production, it's presence. And, and Torrey Smith is the perfect example of that. Not only his season in Philadelphia and his season in Carolina this year, you go back to his time in San Francisco. This guy has not produced as a wide receiver in this league for going on five years now, yet he still keeps getting jobs. And why? Because he does offer that presence. And that's what I think the Eagles are missing. So I don't necessarily need Shelton Gibson. Could be DeAndre Carter. Could be somebody off the street later. Could be a trade. I, I don't necessarily need them to put up big production. I just need them to make the defense aware that they're on the field and and having to 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 sp- pay attention to that, which opens th- opens things underneath for guys like Jeffrey and Agalo. John, we've talked a lot about Jason Peters this week for obvious reasons. He's banged up. He's a Hall of Famer, you know, future potential Hall of Famer here. He's going up against Addison on the Panthers. Addison has three and a half sacks through five games. He's coming off an 11-sack season last year. Is that a potential matchup where Peters can really get burned? And are the Eagles going to do anything different on the offensive line with Lane and Jason banged up now going into this game? No, they're just going to cross their fingers, and but they understand <laughs> right. that. Uh, and and one of the reasons Doug said they didn't even consider uh, sitting Jason Peters with the bye looming after the Jacksonville game, a lot of us thought, well, why don't you let him rest for a couple weeks and then bring him back after the bye? And one of the reasons he said is because Lane's banged up as well. So he might not be able to finish the game, and all of a sudden you need by tie to play right tackle. So Big V's got to be ready. <laughs> I, I mean, last week, neither finished the game, and, and it's becoming a trend with Jason Peters. So by has got to be ready to go. Even Isaac Sayamalo could be kicked out again if need be, and that means Wiz would be back in the lineup. Uh, the positive part of this is it's depth, and I know Eagles fans will laugh at that and say Vitae's not this, Vitae's not that. But again, it's context. Look at the other teams. We're, we're talking about the Panthers. They lost both of their starting projected starting tackles. We had Joe Person on, on the show from the Athletic last night. Their their pass protection has been awful. Uh, and this is a theme around the league. So the Eagles are better off than most teams when they have to go uh, to the reserves. Hey, what's the plan at tackle with Nada if he can't play? Are you playing tackle? Uh, Trayvon, they got you ready to go? <laughs> Trayvon Hester. Uh, and you'll say who? Uh, but uh, they like him. He's He's played a little bit, and he would be sort of that two-down player. Uh, and then you have no issues when you get to the nickel package because then you can rotate in Brandon Graham and Michael Bennett in that NASCAR speed package. So they don't have any issues uh, um, when they when they want the pass rush on the field. The issues come on first and second down. Uh, and, hey, they, they brought Bruce Hector back up again, uh, Wade Kamara Aiken, uh, 
they have issues yeah. next to Fletcher Cox, and, and Tim Jernigan's not going to be ready anytime soon. So that's another position. When you look at October 30th, that could be a position you have to address. That's uh, yeah. Uh, Aiken was released today uh, at wide receiver, so they continue to try to figure out what to do in that spot. As obviously uh, they they uh, Mac Hollins, any news there? Because it's like a race between him and Wallace right now, right? <laughs> yeah, well, Mac's going to win that race. That, that's not really a, a question. The question becomes strategy from the Eagles' standpoint because you can only bring two guys back from injured reserve. So do you want to wait longer uh, for the potentially more impactful player in Mike Wallace, or do you need it so bad you want the quicker player, and that would be Matt Collins, because they're not going to bring them both back. Uh, you also have Richard Rodgers in the equation, who I think everybody forgets, and I, I think that's one guy they might consider activating because he's he's a tight end that can block at least a little bit, and that's another thing they need. So they're not going to bring back both Mike Wallace and Matt Collins, so the issue becomes how do you want to handle it? Do you want to wait for Mike Wallace, or do you want to uh, leap right now because you need that position so badly, or do you want to go – Monty Hall and, and, and pick the surprise box and, and trade for somebody October 30th again. Yeah, Doug Peterson said that both Hollins and Wallace are doing well. We're not at that point with them. They're progressing nicely through their rehabs. Once we cross that bridge down the road, I'll be able to give you more information, but they're both doing well. That was an update today on Hollins and Wallace, so uh, we'll keep our eyes on that. He also mentioned that uh, he was optimistic that Sproles might be able to practice next week he didn't mention playing he just said that he's optimistic that he might be able to get back there and practice so we'll keep our eye on that as well all right uh, you look at uh, philly and uh, carolina both teams big spot three and four is a lot different than four and three uh that's a two-game win streak if you get the win here in carolina they lost on the road last week to washington now they got to play philly here on the road again after beating the they had to go through the three nfc east teams they already played the the cowboys uh, so they'll be done with their NFC part of their schedule here. So uh, Philly, Carolina, how do you see this game going uh, on Sunday? Well, I, I think it is going to be a, another one-score game. I, I think, and and that's what the NFL has sort of become. It's you, you get more surprised at the games that aren't close than the ones that are. Uh, and these two teams are, are both – I think good at this stage. I don't think either is great by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, Ron Rivera talked about, you know, giving the Eagles getting people's best shots um, as Super Bowl champions. I think that's going to continue. Uh, the Panthers need this game. They're going to be up for this game. Uh, but as Ryan mentioned, typically the Eagles do a very good job with Cam Newton. I can't see that changing. Uh, because there's no real threats outside the numbers. So I, I do have the Eagles winning a close game, 24-20. 24-20, that's the perfect score. Don't forget tonight, in one hour, it's picked the perfect score. You can win $500, uh, $400, I'm sorry, $400, if you know the score of this week's game. John's going 24 to 20. More on this game during the countdown to kickoff Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to get you ready for Eagles and Panthers. John, thanks, pal. Hey, thanks, guys.